cataractcoach.com. Curriculum Lesson 14, The Epinucleus, How to Remove It Safely and Efficiently. Cataractcoach.com, The Approach to the Epinuclear Shell in Cataract Surgery. So during FACO, here we remove the central endonucleus and we're left with an epinuclear shell. So we can grab it with the FACO probe. The key here is just using vacuum, a mild to moderate amount of vacuum, and no FACO energy. And then we bring this shell out of the capsular bag. And we want to stay away from the posterior capsule. So look at the chopper position to protect. That's ideal. Let's look at another case. So here we're towards the end, removing the last nuclear piece. There it goes. And then we're taking out the one last little fragment of nucleus. There's the epinuclear shell. We want to try to engage it with just vacuum. So a little bit of vacuum. You know what? It's too risky. So let's switch to the IA probe. So you can remove the epinuclear shell with either the FACO probe or the IA probe. Now the FACO probe is larger bore and will be faster, but it's a little bit more risk involved if you can't get the epinuclear shell away from the capsular bag. So in that situation, it's better to use the IA probe here. With this soft polymer or plastic tip, it's very safe. The technique here is to go around 360 degrees and loosen up the attachment of the capsular bag from the epinuclear shell. Then we can bring the shell up and use very high vacuum, at least 500 millimeters of mercury, to just wolf it down and aspirate it. If need be, you can also use the spatula, the chopper, or any other second instrument to help push any of these pieces into the aspiration port, just to facilitate the continuous removal of the epinuclear shell. Here we're cleaning up the cortex, and let's look at another case. Here's a case again where we're going to use just the IA probe, and the key here is to go around 360 and lift up and get this epinuclear shell away from the capsular bag. So notice how we're going circumferentially, not radially. Circumferentially, to get around, we've got to loosen up that attachment. That looks good. Now it's getting more freed. And the goal is, of course, to bring it up out of the capsular bag. So here we go, grabbing an end of it. We can try another end. It's pretty much free, but we just have to grab an end of it like that. And I'm having a little struggle here, so we'll try something different. We'll go right down the middle. You can go right in the middle, get underneath it. And that changes it, so that breaks that bowl shape of the epinuclear shell and splits into two halves, and each half can be removed a lot easier. So there we go. Now there's the first half of the epinuclear shell. So again, that technique was just using the IA probe to basically aspirate down the middle to split the epinuclear shell into two. And once it's split, it's a lot easier to get it out of the capsular bag. Remember, it's bowl-shaped, and it conforms to the bowl-shaped capsular bag, so it can be difficult to sometimes to even just get it outside the capsular bag, to lift it up. So that's why in this situation we went underneath it, and that worked very well. Let's look at one more case here, taking out the remainder of the endonucleus, and here's the shell, and again, look at the chopper position. Chopper position is in a safety position, and that was to help protect the poster capsule. Do you need a separate epinuclear setting on your machine? You don't have to. So I typically don't use one. I can just control the level of aspiration via my foot pedal. So I can leave it on the typical setting. Some people like an epinuclear setting where they have lower flow or lower vacuum, and that's reasonable too. It's surgeon preference. So here we've switched to the IA probe and getting the last bits of the epinuclear shell here. And you can see if it's a denser shell like this, it may need that spatula or second instrument to help push the pieces down the port. So always the epinuclear shell, it can be removed with either the FACO probe or the IA probe. FACO probe is faster, but the IA probe provides a little bit more control, and that can be helpful in cases like this. We're not looking for speed, we're looking for the best surgery possible and the safest surgery possible to give our patients the very best vision. Thank you for watching. Cataractcoach.com, 
the epinucleus flip technique. This makes epinuclear removal safer and easier. So watch in real time, removing the last piece of nucleus. Now in the capsule bag, there's that thick epinuclear shell. Using just vacuum to grab it, we grab the distal end and use the chopper to flip it upside down, and then we can emulsify it and aspirate it very easily. Let me show you that again in slow motion. So here's removal of the last nuclear fragment. Now there's a thick epinuclear shell in the capsule bag, and it's already been loosened up from hydrodissection, hydrodelineation. So removing the last bit of nucleus here, that's that last fragment. Now with the epinuclear shell, we're staying on the same mode on our chop setting or quadrant removal using just vacuum, zero ultrasound power here. And the goal is to grab that distal end of the epinuclear shell. Nice and easy, chopper there to protect. And once we grab it, which will come very shortly, there it is. Grab the distal end. The chopper now helps to flip the epinucleus upside down. Look at the motion of the left hand, that chopper, pushing forwards to flip it. And once it's flipped over like this, now it's away from the capsule bag. Now it emulsifies very easily. We can even apply a little bit of ultrasound energy to facilitate it. And just like that, the entire epinuclear shell has been emulsified and is gone. So a very efficient technique and a very safe technique. This is the epinuclear flip. So using that chopper to flip the epinuclear shell upside down. Again, grabbing the distal end of the shell with vacuum, using the chopper to flip it upside down. Let's watch one more time in real time. Last nuclear piece coming out. There it is. And now, using just vacuum, trying to grab the distal end of the epinuclear shell. There it is. Chopper now, pushing it forwards to flip it upside down. Now we can it and finish the case quite easily. So beautiful technique. I hope you found that useful. Please check out cataractcoach.com, our free website. You'll learn everything you want about cataract surgery. Sign up for the free email. We'll send you an email every morning with a brand new case. You will learn a lot, much more than just watching YouTube videos. Cataractcoach.com, epinucleus removal technique using the phaco probe and appropriate settings. Now, this is a complete cataract case. I'm going to show you the whole cataract case. So for you guys who complain that it takes too long to watch the video and you can't spare five minutes to watch a complete cataract case and learn the appropriate pearls, then go watch your own surgeries. Don't watch mine. So here's the beginning of the case. We fill the out viscoelastic. And now we're gonna make that main incision there. So here comes the main incision. We're gonna use a single plane type of technique here. Good tunnel length. Really nice architecture. That's a great incision. Now we're going to do a normal cap stretch about five millimeters in diameter. And of course, you know about my forceps that are marked off at the tip. Those two marks are two and a half and five millimeters from the very end of the instrument, respectively. Now the key here, and the reason why I want to show you the full case, is the hydrodissection, hydrodelineation. So the delineation is going to basically create that epinuclear shell for us. And I'm going to show you how we need to be able to get that out. So here we go. Here comes the hydrodissection, 27 gauge blunt cannula, nice and easy. There's a good wave, another wave, another wave. And there the nucleus comes out of the bag, not too dense. And I delineate. Do you see that extra delineation mark? There you go. A little more viscoelastic to protect the cornea, just a little aliquot, small amount. Going with a phaco probe, high vacuum, high flow. Going to go to buzz into that nucleus right here, put the chopper around it and chop it in half. And we're going to take out that endonucleus, nice and easy. But look what happens to that epinuclear shell. It falls back in the capsule bag. So this is a patient with a moderate amount of nuclear sclerosis, about two plus. And now the cataract's out, the nuclear part. Here's the shell, and the cat just, just use vacuum. I don't change settings. So four or 500 millimeters of mercury, 40 cc's a minute of flow, and I just use the phaco probe in vacuum mode only, using my foot to only push down a little bit on the pedal and never go into position three. And you can see we're gonna try aspirate again. I'll try to rotate this whole thing around. It's kind of tough to do so. But all I need to do is grab an edge and don't go through the piece. 
There's a little bit of an edge. There you go. Once that edge is done, look what the, the chopper does. Vacuum only, no ultrasonic energy, and the chopper is going to end up pushing the thing or flipping the epinuclear shell. Watch. So the chopper f pushes and flips it. There you go. Once it's flipped out of the capsule bag, now we can wolf it down with the FACO probe very easily. All, all aspiration, no ultrasonic energy needed. So that's my technique of removing it. I don't use a separate setting of epinucleus or something else in the machine. It's not needed. I just use my standard chop settings. Again, four to five hundred millimeters of vacuum. Um, we have a flow rate of 40 cc's a minute and you control it with your foot. Remember, this is a linear response. The more you step on the pedal, the more flow you'll get in the eye. You can program this into your machine. Now we'll clean up the rest of the cortex. The rest of the case should be routine here. Now, do you need to hide or delineate every case? Do you need to have a separate epinuclear shell? You actually don't. You know, I showed you a video recently um, where we do just cortical cleaving hydro dissection. And that even separates the cortex off the capsular bag for the most part. But in some cases like this, where I have the nucleus partially flipped out of the capsular bag, doing that hydrodelineation is actually helpful because then you have a smaller endonucleus that you can chop and remove very quickly and then you can just aspirate out that soft epinuclear shell again just using the FACO probe no additional settings just titrating the amount of vacuum with the foot and being sure not to go to position three because if you put in the ultrasonic energy you'll go right through that epinuclear shell and you'll nail the posterior capsule and that'll be a hot mess so here we're finishing up the case, and you can see this is a very efficient case. I'm sure that 99.9% .9 of our viewers will agree that this is a pretty clean case. Perfect incision, beautiful rexus, lens in the bag, super efficient case, bare minimum of energy, and a very nice result for our patient here. So let's hydrate it up the incisions here, finish this up. And I got to remind you guys, if you've got an interesting case, can you go to cataractcoach.com, click on the link, and submit the video? I want to learn from you. Teach me something fun. I'm here to learn as much as you are. Thanks for watching my video, and please sign up for a free daily email at cataractcoach.com. We'll get a video like this to you every single day. Cataractcoach.com. Thick cortex and epinucleus remains. How are you going to effectively remove this with the IA probe? Let me just show you the case, and I'll show you what leads to this. So this is the capsular axis, and you can see it's just an average cataract. Good 5 millimeter axis. Here's the issue, is the hydrodissection. So an insufficient degree of hydrodissection. So you know the key of hydrodissection is to separate the capsule from the lens material. But you see that golden ring we just, there you go, that golden ring, that is hydrodelineation. So what we've created is, we've created a big endonucleus. So we've got good hydrodelineation done, but I don't think we did enough hydrodissection. So the correct move here would be to go back and do more hydrodissection. Now the nucleus, or this endonucleus, can be easily removed now. We'll get that chopper in there, tending up the iris there to fix that reverse pupillary block. Chop this cataract in half. That's an easy chop. Two halves done. And we'll take each half out of the bag. But you can see each half that we're removing is a little bit smaller because we're removing the endonucleus. We're leaving behind an epinuclear shell and some thick cortex. And again, the reason behind this is we didn't have the best hydrodissection. We saw the golden ring and had good hydrodelineation, which is separation of the epinuclear shell from the endonucleus, but we didn't have good hydrodissection, which is separating the lens cortex from the capsule. And like we've had a video here on cataractcoach.com about cortical cleaving hydrodissection. So now the question is, what do you do? Do you try to get it out with the FACO probe? No, don't do that. Here's why. Because you haven't loosened it up. This epinuclear shell is not released from the posterior capsule in the capsular bag. So let's go to the IA probe. It's a lot safer. It may not be as fast or efficient, but it's safer. So now going around trying to remove this nice and easy. And we're just doing this back and forth motion to really help free this shell from the posterior capsule from the whatever cortex is remaining. So the goal is to first get that epinuclear shell out. 
and it may take a lot of maneuvering back and forth. And you can see this is a prolonged thing. In this case, it seems like cortex removal is going to take longer than actual nucleus removal. Now we've got it out. Let's polish up that capsular bag, that undersurface of the anterior capsular rim. That looks pretty good. There's a little bit of viscoelastic there, but now we've got a nice, clean, empty posterior capsule or capsular bag. If you look through the posterior capsule, you can see there's some vitreous opacities, which is floaters. There's that viscoelastic going inside the eye. That all looks pretty good. Now, let's watch that one more time. This is the replay of that cortex removal. So I probe goes in the eye, and look at the technique here. We want to grab it and get as much of it as we can and then bring it centrally. And I want to tease that cortex or that epinuclear shell away. And there's a lot of movement. Look at the eye movement back and forth and back and forth. This is very typical of really trying to release the grip of this lens material from the capsule. So again, going in all quadrants, you can see we really want to keep this as one big sheet and then aspirate it down. And once that's complete, now it looks pretty good. There you see, you see we're cleaning up the undersurface of the posterior capsule or the anterior capsule rim. Everything looks really clean here. This patient's going to do fine. So if you get a case like this, the issue was it was an insufficient degree of initial hydrodissection. Your hydrodissection wasn't as good as you thought it was. And that was the issue in my case here. So let's finish up the case. You can see there's the eye well in the capsule bag. It's a normal rexus. Everything else looks great. This patient's going to do beautifully. So that's not a complication. It's just a learning uh, step here. We learn from this material. We learn that, hey, if I do a little bit better hydrodissection next time, I won't have to spend as much time doing that epinuclear shell removal with the IA probe. Notice how we seal up the incision here at the end, do my technique. Don't do those two lateral wall white spots that people, no, 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 no. Do it this way, trust me. And then the lens is centered, nice overlap of the optic by the capsorexis, beautifully centered up too. That looks great. Case is done. So I hope you learned something interesting in this case. I know you love the YouTube videos, but check out the website, cataractcoach.com. A lot easier to navigate. We have a complete list of articles and videos. You can go and check on any of these categories and explore more. You can also search. There's a search engine that's really effective. You can see Gore-Tex lenses like this. And finally, you can look up about me. There's a link that has my surgical instruments. Now you don't even have to ask me. You can just find out for yourself. What's the name of those forceps?